Hello! So I've had some questions about the making of some of the shots for Fate Saga, um, and this was one that came up <coughs> asking in regards to whether this shot was done on ones or on twos, and I thought this might be a good example of a shot to kind of break out a little bit and talk about how some of the animation was done, because something that we really need to think about as animators is not only how can the shot be done at all, but we have to also think about what can be done quickly, or as quickly as we can, but still have it look good. And that can definitely be a struggle. Now this shot is not actually fully done. Uh, this shot's suffering from a little bit of empty world syndrome, although we've got this fellow, random fellow in the back. Um, he's probably gonna be replaced in the future by a different character, um, or a, a somebody else, uh, but he's just sort of a, of a stand-in and there'll need to be other people there eventually. But for now, um, just gonna go through the shot and what's done so far. And now one thing you might find that's interesting is that Larkspur looks like a silhouette. That's actually a compositing thing. Uh, that's, I'm not exactly sure why she's so much darker than they are, but it doesn't really matter because in the finished render, she looks fine. So there's not really anything to worry about in particular. The important thing is what the final version of the characters look like. Uh, because she, it, what makes it confusing to me or interesting is that all the characters have the same general effects happening to them, but she looks really dark. So I'm curious about that, but that um, particular node that's causing it is right here. It's just the reason why I'm curious about it is because the other two also have that same node going on, just different instances of the same node. So I'm not exactly sure why that one's causing her to be a silhouette. Um, but I'm going to drop it for just a moment. Not drop it, but disable it. Uh, just so you can kind of see her more clearly. So. Um, she doesn't come in at first, he's calling for her. So if the character's not on screen, then there's no point in animating them, unless there's a reason to do it, or it's a repetitive or cycled motion, like a walk cycle or a run cycle. Then you may have them jogging or doing something off screen just to get, get it started and then run them through. But this is, uh, she's kind of frame by frame animated. Oh goodness, that's, ah, I, uh, wait, hold on, where's the, where's the camera? Yeah, oh, I gotta fix that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can... I may have to add another frame for that, whoops. So I'm just gonna pull this back and just see. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, anyway. Uh, ignore that for now. I'll probably need to add something to that or push her back a little further so she doesn't um, finish up. So yeah, whoops, <laughs> there, that. there's there's that. Um, anyway, so that's the first frame where she actually appears on screen. So she just needs to have mostly whatever part of her body is visible, <laughs> including the parts that are missing. Um, but like back here, I also have, have showing, but I don't have, let's say her neck or her chest or her, sh or her shoulder, uh, showing up here. Uh, just because for the most part we don't really see it. Now it appears right after that, so she comes in the next frame. She's got her shoulder bulging out of her cowl here. Again, doesn't matter because you don't see it, it's off screen. Um, and then she rushes in. So, um, just taking a quick look at her frames. Now, she is mostly frame by frame with a little bit of puppeting. So I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier how you want to try to, in a project, see what's the, how much impact can you get with the least amount of time, especially when you're working on a big project where you may have a limited amount of time or a limited budget. So something that I do, and I can't say that this is, oh, you really want to do this, or oh, you never want to do this. Uh, this is just something that I like to do sometimes, is I like to lead with the head. So when I was first animating her, I believe, it's been a little while since I had started the shot, but I believe I started f with her head before her body even showed up just to get that, the idea of what that arc is gonna look like. And then I started having her body follow or sketch her body afterwards and have that kind of react. So uh, one thing that I did to help simplify the process was to put her head on a peg and the peg moves. Now really, I probably should have put her whole body on a peg, but I didn't, uh, it's just her head. And the body was frame by framed using the head as a reference. Now, if I were to disable the peg, you know, she's wondering where her body is. It's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> 
Let me put that back. So her head's on a peg, but her body's not. Her body is just frame by framed. So her head, I can actually, when you have puppets, sometimes you can get away with a more limited animation on the puppet itself and have the puppet be keyframed so that you don't really have to do changes to the drawings too often. You can rely more on the movement of the puppet. Uh, it also depends on what kind of puppet you're doing. Uh, I've mentioned, I've shown in previous videos that I'm working on a 360 rig for Larkspur, and this is not a 360 rig. This is just a normal puppet. Some of the shots that have been worked on are just frame by frame. Some are puppets that were made specifically for the shots, and then I'm hoping to take that 360 rig once it's done and put them into other shots that either haven't been started yet or have been roughed, but I can use the puppet on top of the roughs instead of... Um, uh, instead of making a, a fresh puppet or frame by framing. So she comes in and how do I know that her puppet, her head puppet is on ones? Is because you have these keys. Now these keys are spaced out, but you have the straight line that's connecting each of them, which means that these are motion graphics or motion keys. Uh, that just means that they move. They move, there is, um, the computer interpolates the position of these keys and then kind of connects them. Uh, if they were uh, what would be called stop motion keys or I'll also sometimes call them stepped keys because I'm used to working in Maya 2 and stepped keys um, are when you don't have uh, any in-betweens between those two keys. You just jump from one position to the other. Um, these actual little red ones, those are stepped keys. Although there's no keys after that. So if there were, then they would just jump from key to key to key. Now her body is on, actually it just depends on what body parts. So you have a hold here. So her head isn't even really changing at all. Nothing on her face. It's all, this, it's all the same. It looks like it's moving because it's on a peg, but it's actually just staying the same. Now I did want something to lead when he calls out to her. I wanted to show that she could hear him. So I have her eyes look over first. Her head's not doing anything yet, uh, or at least her face facial expression isn't, but she looks over first and then she kind of eases to a stop and goes to turn. And I just always pictured this motion in general when I was visualizing this uh, shot. I just pictured her being very smooth and kind of um, arky, <laughs> is that a word? Circular in her path. So I really wanted her to have a nice little little arcs in her motions. So. She slows down, and I wanted to give her a, a little bit of a reaction time. And then I wanted to give her a take, a little bit of a take. So squeezing her eyes closed, she's lowering her body a little bit, and then she jumps up. And in here, all the different parts, let's see, her bangs are on twos for the most part. So twos, um, so what are on ones and on twos? On ones just means that there's a new drawing every frame. So right here, her eyebrows are on ones. And then they move to on twos, then on threes, and on ones again. Um, on twos just means that there's a new drawing every other frame. On threes, there'd be a drawing every three frames, on fours, and so on and so forth. Now, something that I recommend to young animators is I would recommend to have if you don't have everything on ones, which sometimes there's just not enough time or just doesn't, isn't necessary for your shot, I would try to, if it works out okay, sometimes have the parts not all move, start and stop at the same time. Maybe have something start first, or if, if most of the body's not moving, have something move, so that if you can get it balanced and have so you, something moving most of the time, then even if it's not all moving, all, you know, if not if all of the parts are moving, then that way you can kind of get the impression that the character is fully moving, even when it's only a little bit here and there. It would be my recommendation. Of course, it depends. Now, when her body comes in, she's on ones. Her whole body here is on ones. And then when she's coming to the stop, she's slowing down. She is now on uh, twos for most of her body, but her bangs and her head are a little offset. So they're on ones, or they may be on twos, but they're not on the same timing. And something you gotta be careful about is to make sure that you know the head doesn't disconnect from the body, especially when they're all different parts like this. Uh, this shot was a little bit challenging in that regard. And I have one peg 
that is dedicated to, I believe, the Z plane of her, yeah, the Z space of her head. Because her head goes from being kind of in front of the body to an extent, to or behind the body, to being in front of the body. I believe that was so her hair would go in front. Is that right? I think, it says Z space. Is it doing anything? Or is it not doing anything? <laughs> so. Okay, yeah, there is a Z space change. Okay, yeah, it's probably preventing something from going in front of or behind of, but Z space change just means if you want something to go in front or behind. So if you have a character, let's say, uh, they, their hands are in front of them and then they move to put their hands behind them, then you may want a Z space change. Uh, sometimes we'll just draw it in. If we're doing frame by frame animation, then we may just have the hands just not appear anymore. Just have them be blank drawings when they go behind the back. But especially if we're puppeting or just sometimes the hands are going in front, behind, in front, behind, or they're just doing something where it would help to be able to see the hands while you're animating the whole time or whatever other body part. Uh, anyway, I hope this, uh, this helps and provides a little bit of insight into the, into the project. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I can also get a little bit more into the breakdown of the composite or um, preparing to animate a shot or any of those things. Uh, for anybody who might be interested in doing their own little animation animation projects or just who find it kind of cool and uh, like to see how uh, productions like this tick. Anyway, thank you so much for checking this out and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day.